Hey guys, Psalm 27. I pray it comes alive to you and it encourages you. It's, it's a Psalm of David and it's an expression of his fearless trust in God who is so reliable. The Bible says his ear is inclined to the prayer of the upright. He, he's present to help in the time of need, it says in Psalm 46, 1. This Psalm 27 starts out with, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Of whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against against me, my heart will not fear. My heart will not fear. Say that. My heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. Then he says this one thing I've desired, that I shall seek. And he says it's intimate connection with God. And that's the thing the devil hates the most in your Christian experience, is your personable, quality, devotion life. The devil hates it. He'll busy us with a million lesser things to keep us away from that because he doesn't have that. What fellowship has light with darkness? And God is our light. He's our salvation. And uh, what fellowship has Belial with God? None. So, but yet, this is, the, this is the beautiful thing about being a Jesus follower. Jesus came to liberate sinners and to reconnect us with the holy God. And our sin, my sin, I was so aware of it, separated me from God. I was, the wages of it is death. It's eternal separation from God, and I sensed that. I sensed a distance and a, a chasm between God and me. When I was little, when I was young, I remember around five years old walking down the street at our house, and by our house, and I, I was looking up at the, the beautiful blue sky, and I, and I you know, had been told by my parents that there was a God, and I, and I wanted him. I mean... You know, and you could dismiss it as childish fantasy. No, it, it re really was a deep hunger that has never left me. And uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Solomon wrote by the Holy Spirit that God has set eternity in our hearts. So, you know, the eternal God has, has made us to take up residency with him. But you know, he, he met with Adam and Eve in the, in the garden in the cool of the day and uh, gave him the best part of all of existence, which was himself. And, uh, and then again, you know, he re-upped that with John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. This is good news, and it's monumental here. Now, I want to get to a couple of thoughts here. It says, For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. Uh, he will set my feet upon a rock. Wow. Now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Now, this is the opposite of introspection. Because introspection, you're just pondering the problems. You're most likely down on yourself for issues, you know. And introspection is where you just, you could cave in on it. You know, and that's why we got to swing our focus. We've got to be accountable and responsible for our actions. No question about it. There's a verse in Corinthians that says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Don't you realize this about yourself, that you're in Christ and you've not failed the test. So we've got to constantly reposition our focus off of our problems and onto the promises, off of the what circumstances are trying to waylay us with and get back to, okay, God is my father. He's his son and shield. He's, he's our light and salvation. He withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift comes down from the father above, 
the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. There's no shifting shadow, yet in Psalm 91, we're invited under the shadow of the Almighty, under the shadow of his wings. He's the shade. Shadow and shade means he's close. And this morning, I took a walk, and I walked around our church building for several times, and I the goal being to re-up and redevote and reprioritize and refocus on that, the most essential part of our existence. I remember hearing years ago, a minister said, make sure you don't let the ministry of the Lord get ahead of the Lord of the ministry. I immediately understood that. Because we could be busy about God's even kingdom business, busy about our family lives, busy about all these other things. But on a moment-by-moment level, God actually wants us to, in all our ways, acknowledge him. Proverbs 3, not to lean on our own understanding, just to have just a, 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 an emphasis on that. Okay, I'll give you a parallel in, in a relationship. Marriage, okay? So when we got married, we didn't, we didn't have any children, and then we started to birth children. And we had, we had children in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And uh, we had two daughters and two sons, girl boy, girl boy, and we spread them out. And uh, boy, there were responsibilities that came with that. You know, lessons, sports, uh, meals, uh, bedtime, you know, all the, all the education, all those things that just come with that, you know. Um, we pioneered a church, and then while we were having these babies, and so there was the responsibility of the daily burden of the church and the, and the responsibility to tend the flock and feed the sheep. So you could get layers and layers and facets and facets of these things on it, on you and then lose the whole reason why you started. Well, like in marriage, you know, it became, we went from being um, friends that became romantic, that fell in love and had this romance to chauffeurs, ATM, disciplinarians, umpires, you know, <laughs> referees, uh, negotiators. I mean, and you get so busy that it starts to impede on the original fire of why you got started in the first place. Well, when we were young, we realized uh, our people that were our elders were talking about an em- the empty nest syndrome where all of a sudden the kids grow up and they move on. You know, so then life abruptly changes. And we factored that in and we decided, okay, let's keep sowing toward our marriage. And like this is sowing toward our personal love relationship with God. This is what David is exhorting on us. This one thing I do, this is the thing I desire the most. I'm all, I'm all about winning the battles. I'm grateful that you bring in stress relief. You're healing me from anxiety. You're, I'm not lonely or alone anymore because you never leave me nor forsake me. But th- in fact, that is the big deal, God. I don't want to just be warrior mentality. I don't want to just be, uh, man, I need my needs met mentality. Um, I want to be always centered on you, God. You know, boy, I need this. I need a personal revival every day uh, because let's face it, there are just things impeding on us to try to lure us away from that most vital part. I, 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 two or three nights ago, I went out and I looked up at the stars. It was a beautiful, vivid night. And I said, God, Jesus, you, I really love you. And, and, you know, I don't feel like I've been spending the kind of time with you that I would like to. And I know you know that. And I just want to say I love you. And, and I, I own up to uh, the, my distance, you know. But even then, like, I'm crying out like this one thing I do. I'm basically saying, help God, you know, and he is our help. He's so merciful. He's so good. And he'll lift your head. And our heads need to be lifted up. Psalm 3, 1 through 3 says, he's my glory and the lifter of my head. So 
I pray he lifts up your head, lifts up your eyes, and you look not to the hills, because that's not where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord. Look past the hills. Look past the insecurity, the uncertainty, the upsets. Get Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and he's seated at the right hand of God. God bless you.